another uber entertaining series has been Lakers Grizzlies. Despite the fact that the Lakers have taken a three one lead, I was you know watching the game last night. It was in it was a lovely performance from LeBron James. Had his first twenty twenty game of his career. Anthony Davis hit some timely shots. Um, D'Angelo Russell was huge as well. Had a couple big threes down the stretch before unfortunately fouling out. But I picked the Lakers in this series, and it is shaping up to be a Lakers victory. Um, of course, I do want to shout out to Desmond Bain as well. Absolutely popped off. John Morant has looked fantastic as well. Really does not look like that hand is bothering him at all when it comes to scoring, at least. But I picked the Lakers in this series not because I'm like a John Morant hater, um, not because I'm a Dylan Brooks hater, although I do like to make fun of Dylan Brooks because he is an easy target, but it is because regardless of John Morant's hand, regardless of how feckless Dylan Brooks has been in this series, what hurts Memphis more than anything else is no Steven Adams and no Brandon. That has been without a doubt something that has hurt them more than Dylan Brooks could ever. Now. I do want to get to Dylan Brooks because this man is just, he is producing so much content for us. This guy calls LeBron old, okay? Claims that he is a villain. Dylan Brooks, you are not a villain, okay? You are, you are averaging 11 points in this series. You have an effective field goal percentage of 39. You've had 15 personals called on you in four games. You are a villain in the same way that Scrappy do is a villain. I do, however, want to say that it was bogus of him to get ejected in Game 3. That was, of course, the now famous nut shot on LeBron, which the referees deemed um, a flagrant two. Don't know how that how they came to that conclusion, although maybe it's because nut shots are seemingly way more prominent in this playoffs here, in, in these playoffs than ever before. Of course, you have Royce O'Neal. Um, the only other time I think it compares as when <laughs> Draymond Green kicked Steven Adams in the balls, not once, but twice a couple years ago when Adams was on the Thunder. So, but yeah, ultimately it was a bogus ejection because just the way the play unfolded, Brooks gambled on a steal. He thought that LeBron was going to cross over in front of him. He instead went behind his back and Brooks reached in, got a, you know, cop to feel on the King's crown. And ultimately wound up getting ejected. That was a bogus ejection, but that does not change the fact that Dylan Brooks is ass. Straight up. Now, what's really strange about this is Dylan Brooks is ass. Okay, statistically, on an individual statistical level, this dude stinks. However, Memphis, when you look at their net rating when Brooks is on the court compared to when Brooks is off the court, there is only a seven tenths of a point swing granted memphis has been getting thoroughly ass blasted this series so th the net rating is still negative but brooks's net rating when he's on the court is negative 5.1 when he's off the court that net rating is just negative 4.4 now for context there is really no player for memphis seeing significant minutes that has a positive net rating because they just have not looked they just have not played very well consistently throughout this series. So that's why, as much as I love to hate on Dylan Brooks, I don't think that he is a huge detriment to the Grizzlies. I think that, you know, he plays with a lot of intensity. He does play with an edge. I think he's leaning into that role um, wholeheartedly. I, I think he thoroughly enjoys it because it gives something, it gives people something to dissect about him that isn't his game. Now, Memphis, I think, buys into this because, you know, when you see so when you see one of the better players on your team, granted, he's probably like the fourth best guy on the team playing well. I mean, you know, not backing down from LeBron, not like anyone in the NBA is going to back down from LeBron just from a competitive point of view. But I do think they buy into it. I think Memphis, you know, leans very much into the grit and grind, you know, the edgy team that Memphis has or the edgy brand that Memphis has cultivated. Over all these years, you know, with guys like Zach Randolph and Tony Allen, like Dylan Brooks has the same type of vibes as Tony Allen. He's just not he's just not as good. But that's why I come back to the point that not having Steven Adams or Brandon Clark hurts them more than anything else, because a huge piece of Memphis's game 
throughout the year was their ability to crash the offensive boards. I think Steven Adams was the league leader in offensive rebounding this year, or at least offensive rebounds per game. He averaged five. Nearly half of his total rebounds came on the offensive end. And not only, you know, your ability to corral these offensive rebounds, but to put backs, you know, put backs are always great. And a guy like Steven Adams or Brandon Clark is going to have tremendous opportunity to do that. But also just kick outs, restarting possessions. It is a huge piece of what Memphis does. And it's also a huge piece of why they scored so many points in the paint this year on top of, you know, John Morant being able to get there basically at will. But yeah, no Steven Adams and no Brandon Clark hurts Memphis more than Dylan Brooks could ever imagine. Even if he were ch- intentionally trying to sabotage the Grizzlies, he would not be able to compare to the injuries that Adams and Clark sustained. Now, we're just going to get into some numbers here. So as I mentioned before, Memphis during the regular season averaged at 58.4 points in the paint and 15.3 second chance points. Through these four games, they're down to 49 points in the paint and just above 11 second chance points. They simply just do not have the size to compete with the Lakers. Xavier Tillman has, you know, done his best in, you know, working with what he has. He had a great performance in game two, but he is still not the consistent threat on the offensive end that Steven Adams was, particularly around the basket. And Jaron Jackson Jr., as great of a player as he is, he's not a guy who's going to hang out in the paint like Steven Adams is. He's all over the place for Memphis. Like, he has a crucial part in their offense. And, you know, it's it's just extra tough for them to compete with, you know, somebody like Anthony Davis, even though Anthony Davis has not played particularly well throughout this series. I think he's only at like 19 points a game. Yeah, it's just very poor timing for Memphis. Um, Also, LeBron, duh. I don't think we could talk about any team, any, <laughs> any Lakers team being this successful without LeBron. I mean, there is, you know, there is just nothing more that I could say about LeBron James. Like, there is, like, no more dick riding that I could do because this guy has been doing it for 20 fucking years. He's 38 years old, averaging 24, 13, and 5, shooting damn near 50% from the field. And he's shooting damn near 50% for the field from the field, despite being 5 of 27 from 3. He's just been LeBron. That's it. But, you know, this isn't the LeBron show. Well, I mean, this is the LeBron show, obviously, but this isn't, you know, writer, producer, director LeBron. This is LeBron that actually has a very solid team around him. And this is one of the reasons why I was so optimistic about the Lakers putting together a respectable playoff run because Rob Palenka fixed this team. He fixed the team that he fucked up. So, you know, I will give him credit for that. It was great that he brought in Rui Hachimura. It was great that he facilitated that trade for D'Angelo Russell. Jared Vanderbilt, as well, has been tremendous for this team. Uh, Hit a couple big threes yesterday to start the game off just to, you know, help LA's offense find a little bit of a rhythm. And then, but more so than anything else, it's been his contributions to defense. But really, the two other guys in this series that we need to talk about outside of LeBron are Rui Hachimura and Austin Reeves both of whom have developed tremendously since coming to the Lakers. Rui Hachimura is playing the best basketball of his career. And Austin Reeves, in the span of one season, has gone from, you know, he's gone from being a meme to being one of the Lakers' most reliable offensive assets. Like, he is a full-blown playmaker now. I was watching this skinny kid he, I don't know where he's from. He looks like he's from Kansas. I'm watching him play with unbridled confidence. I'm watching Austin Reeves play like he's the best player on the court while sharing the court with LeBron fucking James. I mean, it's been incredible, his development throughout the season. But him and Hachimura have formed a relentless duo. So far, they're combining for 36 points a night or just about 35.8, I'm I'm rounding up, 35.8 points per game on 17 of 33 shooting from three. This is the type of production that Darvin Ham 
could have only dreamed of from these guys. And they have, you know, they've stepped up. Rui Hachimura had like 26 in game one, if I remember correctly. 29 in game one, 20 in game two, 16 on six of 10 shooting in game three. And, you know, we're still talking about him despite him having a forgettable game in game four, which is bound to happen. You know, shit like that, it, it, it happens. It, it happens. But the Lakers would not be in this position without Hachimura, without Austin Reeves, especially them two stepping up um, in, I don't want to say the absence of Anthony Davis, but in the mild inconsistencies of Anthony Davis, who's averaging less than 20 points a night, 19 and a half, on 42.6% shooting. So it's not been a great series for him thus far. But yeah, Memphis... I love the Dylan. Uh, listen, I, I I think the Dylan Brooks slander is fun. I I think that it's healthy to have a guy like Dylan Brooks who is you know quote unquote villainous, even though he's not really just for like just from like a content perspective. But I anyone who says that this is entirely Dylan Brooks' fault is just ignoring the fact that Memphis was starting off disadvantaged without one of their most crucial players like we knew that this was going to be the Dylan Brooks that showed up because this was the Dylan Brooks that showed up every fucking game throughout the regular season you got and y'all thought that this was going to change in the playoffs no so yeah I mean is he to blame yeah obviously he could he could stand to shoot a little bit better but you can't overlook the fact that no Steven Adams and no Brandon Clark is what's killing the Grizzlies faster than anything else 